Hey everybody, it's Sean with the Good Dog. We've got Miss Evie here. Say hi, Evie. Hi. And we're going to be uh, training Evie to do uh, e-collar recall. So she's never been on an e-collar. Just put it on her. We've got the um, Educator Mini 300 going on. It says Clem, but disregard that. That's good. She won't care. Um, got her all fitted up, right? Got a nice, high, snug, offset, just a little bit like this. Nestled it in really good to make sure it got through the fur. So we're all set up and ready to go, right? Nice and snug, especially for my first session. So I want to make sure the dog's getting really good contact and that there's no errors, no like misfeels, and then the level's too high or anything like that. So I'll go extra snug on the first session on the e-collar just to make sure. We'll get the working level, and then at some point I'll probably stop yakking and just try and get in the mode. And uh, we'll start at the bottom and see how she does. So I'm at two. So I'm going to go tap, tap, tap. Nothing. See that? Did you get did you get that Lord? It's real life over here in North Hollywood. Real life going on. People gotta get home from work. Alright, so that response, make sure we get really good like on her. Um, I'm gonna try it again. That that was four on this. I'm gonna dial down to three because sometimes after they feel it the first time. They get more sensitized to it. Sometimes less, but oftentimes more. The first time they sense it, then they're like, the next time you press the button, even at the same number, they're like, wow, that's too intense. So I'm going to go down a little bit and just see what she thinks about three and see if she feels it. Hang out right there, lady. And by the way, notice I'm on pavement. I love to do this on pavement if I can, um, not, um, not on grass because it gets so distracted by the grass smells. So typically you'll see me, if I can, doing it on a street, something like that. With the Less, the least amount of distractions possible. Right? Are you ready, lady? Let's try three. So I feel like she's even responding to three. I feel like she's getting it. I feel like four might be a little worrisome. So I'm just going to start at three, and then I can always adjust up if three doesn't seem motivating enough for her. Right? So I want her to. Here's the thing, guys. I want her to be motivated. Right? I want her to sense it. I want her to be motivated to go, what do I do with this sensation? And then I want to tell her with the leash gently what to do with the sensation. But if the sensation's too strong, then she's going to be worried about it, and I don't want her worried. But I also don't want her ignoring or bored by it. So we need just that right spot where she goes, what do I do with this? And then I tell her what to do with it. So we'll start at three. Uh, she seems like the kind that's just going to wander out and make my life easy. So we'll check it out. I'll let her kind of do your thing, and then once she wanders out, So it's good. Now she may have sensed that, but then something distracted her, right? You saw her get really intense like that. So a level three on this when her mind goes to level five or six isn't gonna matter much. So what I did was I just pressed held and I just guided back a little bit, a little more leash pressure, a little more leash pressure. Like I'd like you to do this, like you to do this. And uh, finally she came, but it might've been just giving to the leash pressure and not at all to this. So let's check it out some more. the angles that I take guys right so once once I get her commitment looking back at me I'm off the button I switch to good girl and a lot of motion backwards but as soon as I feel her kind of veer off her attention goes off then I move the opposite direction I get back on the button and I guide her in so I'm making sure she knows the only way to turn off the sensation is by coming to me it doesn't mean this and then wander off it means this and come come straight into me. Now, typically early on, she's going to be like, well, let me try this, let me try this, 
She just doesn't know. I'm going to make sure that I create a lot of clarity by changing directions, back on the button, a lot of visual engagement, a lot of movement, and draw her into me, and then off the button once she's committed once again. So we'll just see it over and over again. And right now we're still at three. We'll see if this keeps working for her. If it doesn't, we can always bump it up a little bit. sense of when I'm actually on it. So lots of praise and lots of movement. Now, I see a lot of people, because they're thinking about a lot of stuff when they do the e-call or recall, they press, they hold, the dog turns to give them commitment, they get off the button, they might say good girl, and then they stand there kind of like a zombie, or they go like this, and the dog's like, this kind of sucks, right? So the movement, engagement, and excitement and enthusiasm that you offer really helps the dog focus in and, and complete the exercise with a little enthusiasm and pep in their step. If you're just kind of zombie-esque, you're going to see the dog just kind of get disengaged and wander away. So you've got to do your part to keep them engaged. There's a lot of stuff you're doing here, a lot of different timing things, but once you do this a bunch, it starts to become second nature and then it's real easy to get silly and do your stuff, so. Good girl. Good girl. Huh? I'm looking for this. There we go. Good, good, good. So, I kept changing directions and I kept going back on the button every time she disengaged, making sure she knew the only way to finish was to come to me and finish with a little bit of commitment like that. So that was good stuff. Also, one of the things I want you to see is when she's out in front of me, I press the button and I don't immediately put leash pressure on, right? Because I don't want too many competing sensations on her neck. I don't want this and then simultaneously this. I want her to feel it for a second, just a second. I want her to feel it and go, what's that? What do I do with it? And then I say with this, so that's really kind of my thing. I press, I give her a second to think about it, and then I tell her what to do with the sensation. So I think that that little timing thing is, is helpful because I think a lot of people press and then immediately give leash pressure and the dog's kind of getting spoon fed and not really processing and doing the work. So a good little, a good little tip to think about. Oops, sorry about that. You made stuff on your foot. Come on, lady. like that time I didn't change directions and I didn't get back on the button because she was engaged with me I just made it a little bit more of a fun kind of follow me exercise right good stuff nice, nice work baby you're doing great and you notice I haven't put a word on this so until I'm getting for, for me my, my basic structure with this is until I'm getting I'm your lady I'm gonna get run over until I'm getting um god that's a great microphone um we're really moving up in our production value, so I'm very proud. Uh, so, so, if it's working. So, um, before I lay the word on her, what I'm looking for for my next step for that is that I press the button, zero leash pressure, and she turns and gives me consistent head turns. So once I'm getting that, then I know that she's responding to this and knows what to do with it, then I lay the word on it, right? I don't want to start, most dogs have heard come a thousand times, so I don't want to lay the word on too early and have her start depending on the word rather than on this. Let's go, lady. Let me give you some more room, though. I'm sorry. Come on, lady, let's go. Right, so I'm at three, and she's, I, I know that she's sensing it. She doesn't care too much about it, right? So because I'm at such a low level, it can be hard for her. Sorry. It can be hard. For, 
It's okay. Just the lowest, lowest guy to choose. You good? Laura's having a hard time. So, because I'm at three, it's a good thing to think about because everybody wants to go low, 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 low. And low's great, but low can also make it harder on the dog if you're too low and it's not enough conversation or pressure for her to prioritize the moment that you're trying to have with her. So if I keep underwhelming her, she's just going to be distracted and then we don't have any progress or any engagement or connection. So you want to make sure that you find that sweet spot where the dog actually prioritizes the moment that you have together to be able to make some progress. So I'm going to go up to four because three is giving me marginal stuff, but I, I just feel like she's more out to lunch. So we're going to see if we can get her a little bit better. sensitive girl so four is almost too much for her you see her ears went back as soon as I press her ears went back got a little concern so I'm gonna go down a teeny bit at, you know I'm hoping there's like a three and a half in here so we're gonna we're just gonna see if we can grab that so that's how sensitive this stuff can be if we're trying to make sure that the dog's motivated but not worried about it right so hopefully you got to see that she went from on um, three a natural three like mm, not really caring but somewhat responsive Four, responsive, but a little more worried. So let's see if we can find a different spot. Good girl. Whoa, okay. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Back on. Good girl. Yeah. Okay. Good. So she's doing good. So I think we've got like a three and a half rolling here. Guidance. She's distracted by what's over there. A little more leash pressure. Now I dial up a teeny bit. Good girl. Okay. Good. Right? So I had her at three. <laughs> yeah. So I had her at three. Sorry, we're having technical difficulties. I had her at three, but she didn't care. She was too distracted. So I gave her a little more leash pressure. She was still still locked up. So then I just dialed up a teeny bit while holding the button continuing the leash pressure to see if I could find that sweet, like clutching gas, right? Find just the right amount of gas and release of clutch to where she comes and disengages from that and comes to me. start adding break, letting her know when she comes to me if I haven't asked her to do anything else. Break, go free, go do your thing. Good. Good. So what we're seeing is how quickly her mind gets distracted. I'm at four now and her mind doesn't care because certain things, smells or whatever it is, are tuning her out. So my job with the e-collar is to find that level even on the fly. Even when I'm moving with her, even when I'm pressing the button, I can dial up slowly and see if I can find just that spot where she cares enough to think about what I'm asking for. Let's go. Break. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good head turn. That's a good one. We like that. Break. That was a good one. So that was one of her nicer head turns so far. We'll just keep trucking away here. by the sound of the car, she actually gave a head turn for the car, not for me. So, how fickle they are. Hey, come on, you. Okay. Hi. Good. 
getting there. We're getting there. So now she's really, check this out, right? Really tuned into that person. Good, good. So that's still four, right? All right, here we go. Let's kick it up. Come on, Miss Evie. Let's see some good stuff. Let's see some good stuff from you, lady. Oh, good. There we go. Rex the chain. See how tuned in she is. So I'd like to see in the next couple of reps, maybe if I'm getting some head turns independent of leash pressure, and then we can go to laying the word on it. Let's check it out. Oh, good girl. Lane change. Direction change. Thank you. Break. All right, so that's pretty great. I'm going to go for one more, see if we can get a nice little head turn, and then I'm going to add the word. Oh, uh, she's on to me. Good okay. Great, great, great. Break. Okay, so we're getting some pretty nice, uh, I keep saying lane changes. So we're getting some pretty nice uh, head turns. So now I'm going to add the words. So I'm going to say her name and, and along with the button simultaneously. So, Evie, come. That's a girl. Good girl. Come. Good. That second time you heard me say come, when I changed directions, I got back on the button, right? So when you hear me say good, so I say the command, will you come? As soon as I say that simultaneously, I'm on the button. As soon as she gets commitment and is coming towards me, I'm off the button. I exchange it with good, 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 lots of praise. And then if she tunes out or I change directions and I want her to focus back in, come and I'm back on the button until I get commitment. And then I'm off with more praise again, exchanging it like that. So... That's good stuff. Let's check it out. Break. Evie, come. Come. Good girl. Okay. Break. Evie, come. Good girl. Good. Come. Good. Come. Good. Good girl. Right. So you see all those direction changes are happening solely with e-collar pressure actually slow down a little bit e-collar pressure and then body cues right so lots of engagement lots of right down in her eyes lots of verbal praise um, and engagement there and then lots of movement like this drawing her right into me so I'm using all those things simultaneously to create a really clear conversation right so the e-collar creates pressure but it doesn't give any directionality it doesn't tell her where to go so I'm doing the work with the long line if I need it of telling her what to do with that pressure, right? She feels it, what do I do, where do I go, where do I turn? Voice, eye contact, bending down, engagement, movement, the whole deal like that, and then long line if I need it. Break, come on. You're doing so good. You're doing so good. Yeah. Here come. Oh, that's great. Come. Yeah, okay. Break, break, break. You see those recalls right now, there's no leash pressure involved. It's just Evie and me and my silly dance. No leash pressure. Good girl, you're doing so good. You're doing so good. Yeah. Good. Evie, come. Come. Good. That's pretty good. Good girl. Okay. Break. So that's still at four. So we've been able to be pretty static with her. Some dogs, I have to move around a considerable amount um, level wise here. She's been pretty static, you know, between three and four. Pretty easy stuff. Now, if we introduce like squirrels or other dogs, it'd get crazy real quick trying to manage that. Let's see. That's why we do this nice and calm and quiet like when we start off. Evie, come. That's a girl. Good girl. Come. Oh, good, 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 good. And so it's still a little messy. She's still, watch out behind you now. Still coming around a little bit. It's okay. We'll clean it up. No problem. All right. All right, so let's get a few more, a few more awesome recalls from Miss Evie, and then we'll call it a day. Evie, come. That's a girl. Good girl. Right. So this is the beginnings of it all, guys. It, it's not. We're not doing 50-foot recalls. I'm looking at the wrong thing. We're not doing 50-foot recalls. 
um, it's nothing crazy, but you, it doesn't start with anything crazy. It starts with a simple little thing. You can recall just a couple feet and get the dog used to the, you know, get a pattern to hear the sound, feel the sensation, turn and come to the person, no matter how short the distance. And then you just broaden that distance and just make it more and more. Come on, lady. So don't get carried away with trying to make this too complicated, too challenging, too quick. Take your, take your time, move slow, it's just like little baby steps like this. This is all you need. You know, come out the, tomorrow, you start adding the sit to this and recalling her out of a stationary position. And you're like, you got the beginnings of magic right there. All right, a couple more, we're wrapping her up. guys once again say the word simultaneously press the button right when she's looking away from me right? she's looking this way say Evie come I'm on the button I start moving backwards a little bit she turns to come towards me engages off the button good girl good girl lots of movement lots of action good 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 and then praise easy stuff right One more and we'll like, let's call it. That was a pretty awesome. Let's see if we can get one more great one. Ready? Break. Nice, nice, nice. Very nice. That's a great one. So that's a pretty great first recall session, right? We're still at four on this. We started at three, and then we kind of had like, you know, three was not so motivating. Um, four was like dependent at certain times, but then she got into a nice, pretty comfy groove with four, and uh, and it worked for a lot of different contexts. A little dog distraction right there. I promise you, four wouldn't matter right now at all. But we're not doing any of that stuff. So anyways, confounded planes. So anyways, guys, this is Evie. I'm, Sh I'm Sean with the Good Dog. Um, Educator Mini 300, super awesome tool, really sensitive at the lower levels, works really well. Um, highly recommend it. And uh, this is what a beginning recall, e-caller session looks like. Simple stuff. It's really in the detail and the nuance and the timing and getting comfy to where all your conversations make sense to the dog. Get a couple of these things out of whack and it gets harder. You know, don't move. Your command doesn't sound natural, any of that stuff. And then the dog kind of gets stilted and, and is challenged more. So work on all that timing and, and nuance and you'll have a pretty great thing. All right? See you guys. Let's go.